Welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to look at how to solve system of equations using the Guas-Jordan method. In the previous episode, we talked about the Gaussian elimination method. So here, let's assume we are given some system of equation, say 2x plus 3y plus 2z equal to 4. And our equation 2, we have x plus y minus z equal to 2. The third equation, 3x plus 4y minus 2z equal to 1. So for the Guas-Jordan method, we are also going to go through the same process as the Gaussian elimination method. But here, there are some little Different. So first, when you are given the equation this way, you have to make sure you write your matrix out from the equation. Then you write the C part, which comprises of the equal to part this way. Are we good? So from this equation, we can write our matrix, say E, as from the first equation, that's 2, we have 3 and 2. We also have from equation 2, 1, 1, negative 1. From equation 3, we are also going to have 3, 4, negative 2. This is our equation or the matrix from the equations. Also, we are going to consider our C part, which is now from equation 1, that is 4, from equation 2, 2, and from equation 3, 1. I will are we good? So now we have everything written. What we have to do now is also find A combined with the C, the same thing. So our A combined with the C that the matrix, which is 2, 3, 2. And equation 1 is equal to 4. The equation 2, which is 1, 1, negative 1, equal to 2. Then equation 3, that is 3, 4, negative 2 equal to 1. This way. Are we good? So for the Guas-Jordan method, what we have to do here is that we are going to still apply the rule operation. The rule operation. But here we are going to convert this part to the identity matrix. The identity 3 by 3 matrix. Because this part is a 3 by 3 matrix. So how do we write the identity matrix? This is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is the identity matrix. Meaning we are going to do the row operation to this matrix and convert the A part or the matrix part, this part, to this form. Meaning everything except the principal diagonal should go to zero and everything on the principal diagonal should also go to one so everything here should be one apart from that every other element should go to zero should go to zero that's quite simple are you okay so for the guas jordan method this is what we do everything on the principal diagonal is 1. Everything on the principal diagonal is 1. And everything apart from the principal diagonal goes to 0. For the Gaussian elimination method, this is what we did. Everything on the principal diagonal was 1. Then everything above it is a number. Let's say this way. Then everything below it. So zero zero one. Notice the difference between the two like this. This is for the Gaussian elimination method. You make everything on the principal diagonal one, everything below it zero. Then there will be other elements on the upper part of the principal diagonal but when you go you come to the Guas-Jordan method 
everything on the principal diagonal goes to 1. Apart from that, all the elements above and below it goes to 0. That's quite simple. So we can perform the row operations and turn them to 0. Let's try an example on the Guas Jordan elimination method. So we have this question and we are to solve this equation using the Guas Jordan method. Let's see how we can do it. So our solution. First, we must get our matrix A from the equations and from equation 1, we are going to have it written as 1, 1, negative 1. Then for equation 2, there is no x, so that's 0, 1, 3. Equation 3 is going to give us negative 1, there is no y, so 0, negative 2. So our C part, equation 1 is equal to 9, equation 2, 3, and equation 3 is 2 this way. So the A by the C, that is going to be this form. Our matrix 1, 1, negative 1, and that is equal to 9. Equation 2, 0, 1, 3, equal to 3. Then equation 3, negative 1, 0, negative 2, that is equal to 2. I'll start my row operations. To convert everything on the principal diagonal to 1 and every ed other element to 0. So first, I want to convert this negative 1 to 0. What do I do? I have to add equation or rule 1 and rule 3. So here, I'm going to apply it on rule 3. So on row 3, I'm going to say row 1 plus row 3, meaning row 1 is the same, 1, 1, negative 1 by 9. Row 2 is still the same, 0, 1, 3, and 3. For row 3, this is 1 plus negative 1, and that is going to give me 0. This is 1 plus 0, that is 1. And this is negative 1 plus negative 2. That is going to be negative 3. 9 plus 2, that is 11. I have it this way. Okay, so I still want to change some element to 0. Let me consider changing this 1 to 0 also. So still on row 3, I'm going to apply. I'm going to say rule 2 minus rule 3, and I'm going to apply it on rule 3. So rule 1 is the same, 1, 1, negative 1. That is 9. Rule 2 is the same as 0, 1, 3, 3. On rule 3, that is rule 2 minus rule 3. 0 minus 0, 0. 1 minus 1, this 1 minus 1, that is still going to give me 0. 3 minus minus 3, that is going to be 6. And 3 minus 11, that is going to give me negative 8. This way. Since there has to be 1 on the principal diagonal, I want to multiply equation or row 3 by 1 on 6 by row 3 so that I convert that to the 1. So still row 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 9, 0, 1, 3, 3, 0, 0. This will turn to 1. And when you multiply 1 on 6 by this, you are going to get negative 4 on 3. This way. Are we good? So now, I have to also turn this element to 0, this to 0, and this to 0. So what do I do? I want to work on row 2 
or row one and work on row two the same time. So here I'm going to perform a very huge operation. Let's clean. So pay attention. On row one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say row one minus row two, and I'll apply that on row one. On row two, I'm going to say three times row three minus row two, and I'm going to apply that on row two, meaning the only thing that's not going to change is row three. So row three is going to be the same, which is from here, zero, zero, one. And this is negative four on three. So let's consider row one, which says row one minus row two, which is one minus zero. And that is going to be one. This is one minus one. And that is going to be zero negative one minus three that is going to be negative four nine minus three that is going to be what six are we okay so we have this let's try to work on row two with the formula two the formula is saying three times root three minus root two so three by zero minus zero that is going to be zero 3 by 0 minus 1. This is going to be negative 1. 3 by 1 minus 3. That is going to be 0. And 3 multiplying negative 4 on 3 minus this 3. That is going to give me negative 7. So I now have this. I still have some element to change to. This has to go to 0 and this has to be positive. So let's try to work on that one so now i want to do everything once so this is what we have now i want to get a zero here so on row one i can say four times row three minus or plus row one this formula four times Row 3, which will be 4 plus negative 4. And since I want to get this to be positive, I will multiply row 2 by negative 1 or a negative. Meaning row 3 is still going to be the same with its element, which is 0, 0, 1 and negative 4 on 3. On row 2, I will just multiply row 2 by negative, which is 0. Positive 1, 0, this is negative 7, will turn to positive 7. Then applying the formula to row 1, which says 3 times row 3, so 3 by 0 plus row 1, 1, this will turn to 1. 3 by 0 plus 0, this will still go to what? 0. And 3 by 1, no, that's 4 by 1, which is 4 plus negative 4 that will turn it to 0 and when you work for 4 by this plus 6 that is going to give you a 2 on 3 now can you see that everything now is looking like the identity there's only ones on the principal diagonal and 0 elsewhere so here let's call this equation 3 equation 2 and equation 1. So here it's very simple. So from equation 1, you are only going to see one element, which is for the z part. So from here, you can say your z is equal to whatever here, negative 4 on 3. Now from equation 2, you only see the y part as 1. Therefore, your y is going to be this, which is 7. And from equation 1, you are only going to see the x part, which says your x is equal to 2 on 3. So when you use the Guas-Jordan method, it's still going to give you the same answer, z 
this, your y dot and your x dot. Are you okay? So, mostly it's quite simple to use the Gwas Jordan so that you get your answer straightforward. Thank you for watching this episode. Subscribe to the channel and watch out for the second.